Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time you're joining us today. If you're here live, thank you so much for your participation. Or if you're watching the recording, thank you for checking out this educational information and content. My name is Corey Deharsh. I work with Advanta IRA, and I'll be bringing you a webinar today on the Checkbook Control IRA, also known as the Single Member LLC or Checkbook Control LLC. And I'm going to specifically go over the basics of this investment strategy today. Again, my name is Corey Deharsh. I've been with Advanta since 2016. I obtained my CISP or Certified IRA Service Professional designation back in 2018. And I've been in this industry for, like I said, about five years. I've processed a number of different transactions, including several checkbook control investments. So I've got a good range of experience and history in this space, and I'm happy to pass that along to you in this capacity today. Now, Advanta IRA as a company has been around for about 20 years. Uh, we've got about 8,000 active clients right now with just under 2 billion in assets under management. And the reason we've gotten that far in this space is really that we provide you as the client a dedicated customer service account manager who handles all of your transactions, questions, concerns, and any specific IRA related interests you have. And we also try to provide a lot of educational content like you're participating in today. And with that in mind, I also want to bring up if you have any questions as I'm going through this webinar today please feel free to drop them into the question box. I will answer them accordingly as they may be appropriate to my slides. And at the end of the presentation, I'll also go over any other miscellaneous questions that don't necessarily apply to content in the moment, but definitely should be answered in the context of your checkbook control questions. So back into uh, talking about Advanta, we are a self-directed IRA administrator. We specifically offer a lot of different types of plans that you can self-direct, whether it's an IRA or a 401k. We also offer education savings accounts, health savings accounts, SEP and simple IRAs, and again, 401k plans for small business owners and sole proprietors. So pretty much any type of retirement account offered in the US can be self-directed most people just don't know that that's an option or ability that you can grab a hold of. That is because most of those larger wirehouses actually only allow you to invest into certain products, even if they call that their self-direct product. A truly self-directed account is one that you can invest into basically anything you'd like to with a few small exceptions, and I'll bring those up later. And really only about 4% of the retirement industry is self-directed right now. So that is something that, you know, we're trying to actively educate and bring up so people can utilize that further and, uh, you know, pass along the knowledge and information we've learned about self-direction. If you'd like to get started with a self-directed account, it's actually pretty simple. It only takes about 15 minutes to complete our application. We pair you with a client account manager, get your account funded, and also help you get started with your initial investments uh, through that process. And then you can start investing. Uh, today, specifically, we're going into checkbook control strategies. But just so you are aware, you could invest into a number of different things, such as real estate, hard money lending, the single member LLC or checkbook control strategy we're going over today, other types of real estate, such as syndication investments or uh, larger commercial size properties. I've got a, another slide here that goes over a little bit more details. Again, these are all investments you can hold within a self-direct account. You can even hold them specifically within the checkbook con control account that I'll be going over today. So anything you see here, including that LLC option there on the right-hand side, uh, can really be held within that LLC um, or you know multiple LLCs in that case. Uh, but we definitely expect you to do your own due diligence and consult your own professionals before going into any investments. 
I did just mention on a previous slide that the IRS really allows you to invest into a lot of different things. I'm displaying a lot of them here, but what can you not invest into? Well, the IRS prohibits investments into life insurance policies and what they deem to be hard to value collectibles, such as antiques, artwork, fine wine, things like that that would be a subjective and valuation asset the IRS restricts. The only other way the IRS really restricts investments of IRAs or 401ks is prohibiting transactions with disqualified persons. As a simple rule of thumb, a disqualified person is someone that's on your lineal tree, whether it be your parents or your children, and including your spouse. Uh, siblings are allowed, uniquely enough, but children, parents are disqualified persons that you cannot interact with as far as a purchase or a sale between. The other thing listed here, UBIT and UDFI taxes are subject to specific investments, not necessarily anything that we'll be covering today, but if you do have questions on UBIT or UDFI, you can feel free to reach out directly one-on-one. -on -one. If you're a current client, you can definitely ask your client account manager. If you're interested in Advanta and want to learn more, I will have my contact information up on the screen again towards the end of the webinar, and you can contact me directly for any UBIT or UDFI questions you may have. As I just referenced, the disqualified persons, I've got a chart here that basically breaks that down. Your spouse, your children, your parents are all disqualified, other relatives, trusted friends, and uh, what we would call non-disqualified relatives like cousins, uncles, aunts, can be investment partners or you can invest and do deals with those individuals. So as far as checkbook control, the main topic today, I'm gonna go over a few basics. The agenda here is gonna cover what a checkbook IRA is and how it works, a few basic rules for the LLC, as well as how to partner the LLC or partner with others in the LLC for investing, some basics of maintaining the LLC throughout growth until you're ready to wind down and take some of the earnings out of the LLC or maybe close it completely. And then I'll go over any final questions that we've got in the chat box. I do see uh, there's been a few people post in here. Uh, yes, I will have my full contact information up again. I do not have a way to jump back over to that. The recording of this webinar will be sent out to everyone that's registered. So you'll also get copy to my contact info that way. And someone mentioned that it's hard to hear me uh, since I saw that pop up. I've been trying to speak a little bit louder. Uh, so please feel free to check your audio controls as well. I'm trying to speak loud and clearly as possible. And if anyone else is having any audio issues, uh, please go ahead and post so I can be mindful and aware of that. So jumping into the agenda, checkbook control with an IRA is basically an account where your custodian or administrator, in this case, Advanta, has an account in your name or retirement account, whether it's a IRA or a 401k, and we fund an investment into the checkbook control account where you actually set up an LLC entity, you get it registered in the state of your choice, you get a tax ID number issued, and you go open up a bank account at the financial institution of your choice in the name of that LLC. And then we process an investment as the custodian administrator to fund your retirement account into that LLC and thus send the money over to that LLC so that you can make any investments you'd like at the disposal of your checkbook in that case, or in most common days, you'll see a debit card being used, but the principle in itself is that we fund an investment into an LLC and you're the manager of that LLC, thus maintain and operate the funds in your retirement account. Now, there are more than one ways to achieve checkbook control. The first way here is the LLC route. That is a route that's used pretty often, but the other route and option that we have is to set up a trust. Uh, the difference here is that the management of the LLC has to be assigned to a manager. In other words, the client in most cases, maybe the client plus their spouse or business partners, et cetera. 
And the LLC is also managed by that individual as far as check writing. So you can process any investments, make any investments in the name that you would like uh, of the LLC. And that's how you would process those types of investments. With a trust, you as the account holder cannot be the trustee. And the trustee also has that check writing power. So you would need to make sure that you have a trusted trustee that is not a disqualified person, as I referenced in the previous slides, and that you're having them help you coordinate any investments you'd like to make and movement of money you'd like to accomplish. The IRA in itself or the 401k would simply be the grantor or the beneficiary of the trust. You would have a trustee and you as the individual would really just be operating in behalf of coordinating the trustee and the retirement account to process your investments. I did just get a question about the slides. I will be able to send out the slides. You'll have to email for a copy of the slide deck. All of my contact information will be on the screen again at the end. But if you emailed me or your account manager, if you're a current Advanta client, we can definitely send you the slide deck in a PDF format for your reference. So some key components of a trust set up for checkbook control is that you can set up either a revocable trust, a special needs trust, or a life, tr a life insurance trust. Those are different trusts available. And the parties in the trust are the grantor, which ends up being the retirement account, the trustee who serves as a fiduciary and manages the assets of the trust, and then the beneficiary, which again, in this case, ultimately ends up being the IRA account. A personal property trust allows you to set up a bank account, have the third party trustee, and then establish checkbook control so you can make your investments within that personal property trust. And a land trust is pretty much set up very, very similarly to a real estate transaction where the land trust takes title of the property. We basically just have the trustee establish a bank account in the name of the trust and Advanta funds into that bank account, and then your trustee processes the actual transactions for the land investment directly. Advanta, again, must pay all the expenses and income directly on behalf of the land trust setup, whereas the checkbook control setup, we move the money into that LLC at your discretion, and then you invest accordingly at that time through the name of the LLC and through the processing of the LLC's bank account. The key components of the LLC setup is that you'll have potentially shareholders and owners or members of the LLC that would all be listed on that operating agreement. You'll have the managers or decision makers of the LLC. And then the operating agreement is really the document that binds those pieces of information, those parties to the LLC together. And it's important to note, as I've got here, that the IRA cannot be the manager of the LLC. It has to be an individual, uh, typically the client, the client and their spouse or any other investment partners they're working with listed as the manager of the manager managed LLC. And the IRA account is simply one or the only member of the LLC that's being set up. Now, I feel like I've covered the basics of what is a checkbook IRA and how does it work? The next thing I'm gonna jump into is some basic rules about checkbook IRA control. And if anyone has any questions, again, I just wanted to reiterate, please feel free to drop them in the chat block. I will go ahead and answer them as they are appropriate. So rules for checkbook control, you must have a manager managed LLC. It's a very simple statement in the managerial section of the operating agreement. It just needs to say this, LLC entity is being formed as a manager managed entity. It cannot be member managed when the IRA account is a member because the IRA is not an actual individual able to make day-to-day -day decisions on behalf of the LLC. The IRA can be one of many members in the LLC, but it's important to note that the ownership percentage must break down equally and accurately based on 
who's putting what into the LLC. So for example sake, if I personally set up an LLC where I put in 30 grand out of my pocket and 70 grand out of my IRA account, then that LLC would be set up that I personally have a 30% ownership and the LLC is owned 70% by the IRA account that I've got as well. It is important to note that the ownership cannot be split or changed once it is created between disqualified persons. So that 70-30 split I just referenced, in the future, I could not buy out 5% and make it a 25-75 split. It is locked unless there is a disqualified person that comes along that is looking to engage with that LLC or, or uh, interact and behave within that LLC. Uh, as far as filing tax returns, you do not need to file a return if it's a single member LLC. If you have multiple members, there are simple returns you may need to file, but that is something, again, I would encourage you to consult your CPA or tax preparer for proper guidance in those realms. And also, if this strategy is something you may have heard of and just aren't too sure if it's allowed, legal, or looked highly upon, uh, there is some case law that supports that the checkbook control strategy is perfectly fine and allowed. And also, uh, what you're able to do as the manager or IRA account holder, as far as your managerial rights and responsibilities, those can all be researched further by checking out Swanson versus Commissioner and the TC memo of T.L. Ellis. So partnering, I just gave a quick, simple reference of partnering myself as an individual in my IRA into the LLC as a 70-30 split, but you can actually have that split be really anything. And it, again, has to be based on what's being contributed by each contributing member into the LLC. So you can have multiple retirement accounts, a retirement account plus multiple individuals, uh, multiple entities that may not be retirement accounts or individuals like other smaller LLCs or other business entities subscribing into the LLC. Really the case is such that the managers would obviously have to allow new members and, and the processing of that, but all of the listed individuals or parties that are members and managers will have to be outlined on that LLC's operating agreement. I see a few questions come in. Just give me a brief second to read through these, and then I will jump into this next slide here. So I've got a question. When I set up my IRA LLC 12 years ago with three individuals, I was told to regard myself as trustee when signing checks, etc. Did I misunderstand you in this regard? Owner can't be trustee. Uh, that is a slight misunderstanding, just such as the LLC itself is different than the land trust or private trust style checkbook control. So if you did set up an LLC, listing yourself as a trustee is just in turn listing yourself as a manager. It's pretty much just a different verbiage, uh, but conveying the same sentiment. So as long as that's an IRA LLC and not an IRA trust, you're perfectly fine listing yourself in that capacity. And then another question here. I am of the understanding that an IRA owner cannot provide any services to the IRA investment. Example, if the IRA asset is real estate, the IRA owner cannot hands-on manage the property. So my question is, how does the IRA owner qualify to serve as the manager of the LLC? Well, when you're talking about real estate specifically, that is true. Real estate owned in a retirement account, whether it's in an LLC like we're discussing today, or in general, cannot be managed with any sweat equity from the retirement account owner. So while you may be able to be the manager of the checkbook LLC, that does not allow you 
to do the sweat equity on the property that's held by that LLC. You would still have to outsource those types of uh, projects and different types of tasks that need to be done to appropriate vendors that you would coordinate and pay, kind of like you're a general contractor and you're just subcontracting out some work. So that's how that would work. And again, it serves in that capacity because you're allowed to be the manager of the LLC. You're just not allowed to do any sweat equity on behalf of an IRA owned property or other entity to that matter. So I hope that answered the question. It's perfectly fine to be the manager of the LLC. It just does not specifically allow you to do physical maintenance or what is called sweat equity per the IRS's rule and regulation on any real estate investing. So I'm gonna go uh, transition back into my PowerPoint here, maintaining the checkbook. Uh, really, so once you've got the LLC established and set up, we've got the money moved into its control, so you're managing it. You can then make investments as you see fit. It can be into real estate, you can fund into some uh, private syndications. Maybe as an LLC, you're lending out money, whether it be secured loans or unsecured loans regardless of the investments you're making. It's important to know that the cash flow must always come back in and go out of that LLC's bank account. None of the money should be touching any personal accounts you own or going into your personal pocket for any capacity. So it is very important that you control that cash flow. And as a manager of an LLC, it is your responsibility to maintain proper, proper record keeping and bookkeeping as well, because we at Advanta do not have that type of records or, or information when you set up this checkbook control strategy. It is required of you as a self-direct account holder to update your custodian or administrator with the value of each asset you hold at a minimum once per year. We typically request these at the end of the calendar year. So I just wanted to point out that your real reporting for a single member LLC or checkbook IRA is just that you keep your own record keeping and bookkeeping in good standing and to the best of your ability. And you report on what we collect as called a fair market valuation form, what the value of the LLC or trust is once per year at a minimum. You can do that more often depending on your needs and your uh, fee agreement and status, but it's just something that I wanted to outline once a year is due. And again, the earnings stay within the LLC until you're ready to diversify any of those funds, take any distributions, or utilize any other investment strategies outside of the LLC. Give me one second, everybody. I'm gonna check a few more questions that have come in here in the last moments. Would you talk about a property being purchased 50% checkbook LLC, and 50% purchased by my own LLC. So that in itself is allowable. Uh, you would have to go and set up the closing transaction so that the checkbook LLC takes ownership and deed of title as to 50% owner, 50% undivided ownership interest. And then the personally owned LLC takes ownership as to the other 50% undivided ownership interest. Now, each of those LLCs respectively would be responsible for 50% of the closing costs and then moving forward, 50% of all expenses and actually subject to receive 50% of all income. So it may be easier for these two LLCs to partner into a third LLC together so that, that cash flow flows a little bit more smoothly through that third LLC. And that third LLC is the only entity taking title on the property. Uh, it could work perfectly fine the way that's outlined in this question, uh, but it's really something to speak with your account manager at Advanta, your financial advisors, your tax advisors to figure out what's the most efficient strategy for you and what's gonna work the best in the long run for what you're trying to accomplish with that property that's being purchased and how often and how different the cash flow is going to be moving in, out, et cetera. I hope that answered that question efficiently. Is Swanson the authority for owner being manager? 
Actually, I believe the other case, uh, the TC Ellis memo was the authority on the owner being manager and it specifically referenced uh, that the owner should not be drawing any compensation for their management of their IRAs LLC. Uh, but please feel free to look into those cases directly. I believe we've got some reference on our website or you can simply Google Swanson v. Commissioner or uh, the TC memo with Ellis. Not physical maintenance, but what about administrative duties such as collections, bookkeeping, meeting prospective tenants, et cetera? Is that same as you define sweat equity? So those things are not defined directly as sweat equity, no. And you're allowed to do those such as, you know, collections, bookkeeping, uh, meeting with tenants. You can definitely outsource those things to a bookkeeper or a project manager or a property manager and just pay them for those services. But what it is important to note is that you're not allowed to compensate yourself for those services. So if you are doing those, uh, you know, meeting with uh, prospective tenants and doing the bookkeeping, uh, that is something that you're doing to no current benefit because you're doing so to benefit your retirement account and your future earnings. That's the way the IRS looks at that and would rule and restrict on that specific capacity. Uh, for the gentleman that listed that question, if you wanna go into that a little bit further and in more depth, I'd be happy to do that with you one-on-one. -on -one. Just feel free to reach out to me. And then I'll get over one more question before I jump back into my slides. I already have a single member LLC used for investing purposes. There is already a bank account associated with the LLC and I am the single manager. Can I change the operating agreement to convey that as Advanta IRA has 50% portion of the existing LLC? And the answer is no. Once the LLC has been established and used for any purpose, it would basically be disallowed to then add the retirement account in later. And that does go back to one of my previous slides as well regarding interaction with disqualified persons. So in this scenario, you would be buying your IRA account into the LLC by reducing your personal ownership in the LLC. And therefore that in itself would be a conflict of interest. But a rule of thumb is that any newly formed LLC or LLC you formed and have never used it for any purposes can be set up for checkbook control. If it's been used for anything in the past, even if it's a dormant LLC at the moment, it should not be used for checkbook control because it's got that history of other purpose and existence. And with that, I'm gonna jump back into my slides. I covered maintaining the checkbook. I covered a few questions about maintenance in the checkbook. Now, what if you've made a lot of earnings within your IRA LLC or your IRA trust account and you wanna start reaping the benefits of those earnings? Well, what you need to do is to actually move the money back from the LLC or trust so that you can then take it out of your retirement account via the proper channels. So you would send the funds, whether it be a check, a wire, uh, or a money order, uh, ACH, to Advanta from the trust or the LLC's account, we deposit it into your retirement account as either income generated from the investment in the LLC or trust or other types of proceeds from sale or existence of that trust. And then we allow you to process the distribution out of your retirement account and we issue the appropriate tax reporting of that money leaving your tax sheltered retirement account. Um, you can also transfer to another IRA custodian if that be your case scenario. So let's just say you've got a pool of money at a larger managed custodianship and you start to self-direct, you diversify, you do well, and you wanna move some of those earnings back to the managed account, this would be the process you follow and you would just conduct a transfer instead of a distribution to owner at the third step of this outlined scenario. So a few pros and cons of buying investments directly through the IRA are that you actually are 
easier to stay within the rules and regulations of the IRS when you're buying investments directly through the IRA. You reach out to your Advanta account manager. They assist you with any questions you have about the investments you'd like to make. They send you instruction emails on how to make those investments and basically help you through all of that so that everything's done in good order, in good fashion, hopefully in a very smooth and simple process. The con side to that is that there are a bit more administrative expenses when we're handling the investment transactions with you and for you. And you also do not have the ability to write immediate checks for new investment transactions. So if you go to an auction on a Friday afternoon, it may be until Monday before you can get a hold of Advanta and get a transaction processed uh, to fund an auction check or whatever investments you may be looking to do. Now, if you've got existing investments, we do have a client online portal you can access 24 seven and submit a request for us to process a bill payment or an expense payment up to $5,000 and that'll be processed the next business day. If it's above 5,000, no problem. You just email your client account manager and they'll still get that process for you within the next business day. Now the pros and cons of actually using the checkbook control, you have quick access to those funds. If you are going to auction or you're trying to do fast paced real estate investing or any other fast paced investing for that matter, you're able to hold more assets within that LLC and lower your Advanta fees. Uh, in our case, we have an option that allows you to pay a flat rate fee per each investment you hold. And if you hold an LLC, all of the investments you're holding within it are billed within that one LLC flat rate fee. So it's a way to consolidate some fees on our end. And also with that LLC, having your IRA as the member and a trust tax ID number for the LLC itself, there's a possibility for some anonymity protection as far as individuals knowing who actually made the purchase by way of that LLC, if that's something you're interested in and trying to be sensitive about. Some cons are that you have more record keeping that's actually on your onus and at your specific requirement. There's less of an oversight by Advanta because really you're free to do any investments you'd like. You will have that dedicated account manager I referenced that you can contact at any time to go over questions and make sure things you're interested in doing are allowable. But if you've already done an action or, or made a transaction before contacting your administrator, there's some cases where we are not able to help so much. We can help you figure out what to do at that point, but it's definitely a resource, uh, your account manager, that you should utilize before moving any investment transactions forward if you have any questions, if the IRS will allow it in your IRA or not. And again, it's just easier to engage into prohibited transactions when you're not working with us hand in hand for every investment that you're making. So with that all in mind, which is the best strategy for you? Uh, we always implore you to consult with your own CPA, tax preparer, attorney, financial advisor uh, before you make any investments. We can provide you resources for those types of services. We do have some that we've used for several years that a lot of our clients have used for either CPA work or setup of the LLC. We've usually got some in your region or area that we can refer you to that have done business for our clients for years in the past. Having said that, most clients do choose to simply have Advanta hold their investments because they do prefer us to do that record keeping and to make sure those records are in order and also to verify that those investment transactions are all being done with IRS guidance in rules and restrictions at the utmost point of clarification and being done properly. And you can also switch between strategies in the future. If you set up a checkbook LLC and decide it's not best for you, you can wind that down and move your investments directly into the IRA account or vice versa. If you make a few investments and decide consolidating into an LLC would be better for your purpose and needs, you can set that up later and assign those assets into the LLC with the help of your account manager. 
Again, Advanza cannot provide any specific advice or counsel on investment strategies. I've got a slide here with our full disclaimer that we do implore you to do your own due diligence, consult your own professionals in those endeavors, and contact us if you need referrals for those professionals. Uh, we'll be happy to provide that to you. One more tidbit about Advanta. I mentioned at the beginning the client account manager role that really can serve as a help to you in your investment strategies. The other aspect is our education. We put on events like this one that you're participating in today, typically two days a week, give or take. We also host them all on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So there's plenty of videos, a very robust video library right now with guest speakers on specific topics and strategies and just Advanta experts on topics and strategies. So anything with a self-directed retirement account that you're interested in, I'm pretty sure we've got some information and some beneficial content that'll help you with that. And we also run a blog. So if you're interested in industry news, you can feel free to check out our blog from our website as well. I'm gonna go ahead and read back through the questions. I will drop my contact information on the slide right now. And I'm gonna flip back through the questions. So please type them in and I'm gonna to get to them right now. I've got a checkbook trust for many years with third party trustee as signer. How complicated to convert to an LLC checkbook, moving funds, new bank account, new tax ID, et cetera? Well, I've actually not specifically seen that question before, but just walking it through out loud, it would be really the context of winding down the trust, getting the funds and assets in question conveyed from the name of that trust back to the IRA account and then conveyed from the IRA account into the newly formed checkbook LLC and processing the physical transaction paperwork to wind down the trust, close out the trust investment, and then open up and invest into the LLC. So complicated? I don't think so. Tedious? A little bit. Timeliness? probably about a week to a week and a half, uh, but you will need to have the appropriate documents drafted up. I don't know what assets are in that trust for the individual that asked that question. As far as needing a quit claim deed, if it's any real estate, uh, two quit claim deeds for that matter, one from the trust to the IRA, then from the IRA to the LLC, but any other entities, typically just an assignment of ownership interest document can be prepared. Uh, by either your attorney, yourself, if you're proficient in that uh, lane and endeavor, or an appropriate professional that's competent in those fields. Next question, do you have to update asset value every year to FMB? Yes, Advanta does require per the IRS to update the value of each asset on an annual basis. We typically request this around November, and we request that clients provide a value to us as close to 1231 of that given calendar year as possible. We're happy to accept values updated throughout the year as well, depending on your investments and your strategy, it may be beneficial to you to submit a value update once a quarter or even more often, but at a minimum, it is required of us as the custodian administrator to report to the IRS the value of active investments once per year. Are Advanta fees based on FMV? The answer to that is maybe. We have two different fee agreements uh, at this time. One is our flat rate per asset agreement and the other is our value-based agreement. So if you're on our value-based, then yes, it does depend on that fair market valuation. That is a scenario, as I was just alluding to, it may be beneficial for value-based fee agreement clients to update their value more frequently than the flat rate per asset agreement clients, which it really wouldn't make a difference to that effect in those cases. If I were to start a business LLC for property cleanup or pressure washing, could I use my IRA to help fund the business? For instance, startup costs, what limitations, if so? Well, there are ways that you could use your retirement product 
uh, by way of what's called a ROBS plan, roll over to start business plan. Uh, but there are some restrictions to that plan and to what you would be accomplishing with that property cleaning pressure washing business. So for the individual that asked that question, I would highly implore you reach me one-on-one. -on -one. We can go over what your exact needs and context are for this business LLC and see if there is a retirement product that would fit for your needs and help you get that business up and running. And the next question, in my Roth IRA LLC, I take title of my rentals and land trust. Can you do any partnering within the land trust and not have to bother with taking title as an IRA LLC? My understanding is that you can partner within a trust like that. Uh, the IRA, very similar to the LLC setup, would take ownership percentage equivalent to the value it adds to the land trust, and so should any other partners in that land trust. So you would just set it up the same way as my example earlier with the 70-30 ownership split. It would just be done within this land trust as opposed to within an LLC vehicle. Expense versus non-checkbook control. I believe that's just referencing what is the expense. Uh, at Advanta, our expenses are pretty flat rate and pretty standard for the industry. Um, you may run into a bit more expenses as I had covered in a few of my previous slides when you do not have checkbook control, simply because you'll be looking at potentially additional assets or additional transactions taking place with your assets that otherwise wouldn't be uh, expenses that Advanta have to process if you're handling those types of transaction and expenses internally within a checkbook account. Can an HSA be run through a checkbook IRA? Uh, the answer is yes, but I believe it's backwards. An HSA can maintain a checkbook IRA account, yes. You would just set up the HSA account with Advanta, let your client account manager know you're interested in checkbook control, They'll send you a templated instruction email, how to establish the checkbook control. They'll answer all your questions about that. And they will also help you get that LLC funded by way of your HSA account. So that answer is yes. Can both options invest in foreign real estate assets? That is a great question. Uh, yes, they can both invest into foreign real estate assets per the IRS and per Advanta. We don't have any restriction on foreign real estate investing, nor do the IRS. However, the country in which you're investing, the foreign entity, they may have a say in what entities or individuals are allowed to invest in real estate in their jurisdiction. So for example, I've had investors invest in Canada. I've had investors invest in South America that I've seen before. And in South America specifically, I've seen a country allow an investment without any issue. And I've also seen a country restrict a US-based retirement account from investing into real estate in that region. Uh, I think the client did still get that worked out. They just had a few extra things to apply for and make sure that they uh, verified on the foreign country's end. But the answer is yes, there's nothing on the IRS or the US side of it that would restrict foreign real estate assets. It's more or less verifying on the foreign company, the foreign country side, what they do and do not allow. How do you value a non real estate LLC, such as a service based business? Well, the LLC valuation should be a cumulative total of the cash in its bank account and a hard value for each investments that it holds. If you're operating a service-based business within an IRA's LLC, there are some additional aspects, even aside from valuing, that you would want to speak with the CPA or a tax preparer about because the IRA investments and IRA accounts in general or 401k accounts are set up specifically to generate passive income. 
So if there's a service-based business, there's potentially those UBIT and UDFI taxes that may come into play. I would definitely implore you to consult a CPA or tax preparer before moving into a service-based investment strategy within a IRA LLC. But just to go back and answer the question in a root and general sense, non-real estate LLCs can invest into, let's say a hard money loan, for example. So the value of that entity or asset specifically would be the outstanding principal on the loan or deemed by a CPA or tax preparer, maybe the outstanding value of the loan plus the expected interest and profits to be um, received. So that in itself, you know, could be different depending on your financial advisor and how they value that asset. Any other assets probably are hard valued assets, meaning you've got a specific dollar figure you invested to purchase the asset, or you have a specific uh, price per share or price per stock that you can reach out to and collect for any syndication investments you've made or other types of investments you could have done within your checkbook control LLC. Can an IRA own a series LLC and or can the IRA LLC own additional LLCs? Uh, yes, I did allude to that as a potential strategy earlier for someone that asked about partnering for real estate, 50% IRA owned LLC and 50% uh, individually owned LLC. Uh, the IRA can own a series of LLCs or own additional LLCs you would just make it such that the root LLC, that is the first LLC that your retirement account invests into, uh, is taking title of ownership or title of uh, management or you know, operating um, control in those sub LLCs, not specifically the main LLC, which again, you as an individual account holder would be the manager of, your IRA is the member, you can then have your LLC be the member of further LLCs and you as an individual be the manager of further LLCs. And those can all be funded by way of that root LLC that you first established and funded with your self-direct account. I haven't heard solo 401k. Do you do those? What's involved with transitioning to solo K? So yes, we do solo 401k accounts. They can have LLCs. Uh, there's also a few other strategies very similar that you can utilize. Uh, so if you're interested in our Solo K product, uh, feel free to reach me or your account manager if you're currently a client of Advanta's and we could definitely give you more information about our Solo K. As far as transitioning, it's really just a matter of establishing the new account and then moving money by way of a transfer into the Solo K or a rollover into the Solo K out of your other retirement products or a new money contribution into that Solo K account. And I'll take one or two more questions. I think I see two, three questions here. So I'll get through these three questions I still see, and then I'll go ahead and wrap up. I'm trying to be courteous of everyone's time, keeping this right on one hour. And uh, thank you everyone for adding these questions in. I hope I'm being helpful and resourceful for you all. Can an IRA own an LLC company out of my home state or home country? Yes, the IRA can own a company out of your home state. Your home country goes back to the real estate question I had a moment ago. You'll have to figure out with the investment country what they allow or do not allow. But an IRA can own a company or you know, invest into other entities that are not in your specific home state, uh, home country as well, should be fine. But again, check the resource on that country side to make sure that they allow it. Can I invest in crypto via the LLC? Yes, a lot of investors right now are setting up the checkbook LLC so that they can then, in the name of that LLC, invest into cryptocurrencies and hold their cold storage wallet uh, directly as opposed to having it held by an IRA custodian or administrator. 
It's actually the way that most of our clients have been doing investing into crypto space for the past 12 to 14, 16 months. Uh, but the answer is yes, you can invest into crypto by way of the LLC. Uh, that is a pretty commonly used strategy at this point in time. Is there naming requirements for the IRA LLC? For example, when I was looking into investing in cryptocurrency, I believe the name of that account needed to include my name and or the IRA account number listed as the name of the cryptocurrency account. So the answer of the naming requirements, we request that you do not list um, IRA or your account number in the name of your LLC itself, just to make it smooth and simple. Uh, outside of that, we do not have any naming requirements on our end. So John Doe could establish John Doe Investing LLC or John Doe LLC or Paper Mill LLC, whatever he wants the name of the LLC owned by his IRA account to be, can be named that as long as it's available in the state of choice. Now, there is specific naming for the member of the LLC, which will have to be the full accurate vesting of the retirement account. At Advanta, that name would look something like Advanta IRA Administration for the benefit of that client's name and that client's account number. But that would only be found on the internal operating agreement document for the LLC. And again, that's just to properly list the retirement account as the member of the LLC. And then you as the ind individual would be the manager. Is there a way to achieve checkbook control for a Roth IRA? This will be the last question I answer. And the answer is yes. The Roth IRA, just as the traditional IRA, 401k, HSI, HSA, ESA, they can all establish checkbook control. Uh, so it's indifferent. Actually, when you're investing with a Roth, obviously those investments grow tax-free instead of tax deferred. So the answer is yes. It's a strategy that uh, works out great for Roth accounts, traditional accounts, SEP, simple, all of the types of accounts offered. And with that, I thank you all for your participation today, for your time in reviewing this with me and answering your questions and just learning a little bit more about checkbook control. I hope this has been helpful to all of you. If you are participating live, I do want to reiterate that the recording should be emailed out tomorrow, and you can also email me directly or your client account manager if you'd like to get a copy of my presentation slides from today. Thank you so much for participating. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I hope that we have a chance to link up again soon.